flip video about energy levels, sublevels, and orbitals, all parts of the atom, um, and about how electrons are involved in these parts and where we can locate them. So the whole point of this video is this chapter focuses on electrons. Where are the electrons in an atom? That's what we're going to get at in this video and start. So let's first refresh our memory and take a look at hydrogen. So if you remember hydrogen has an atomic number of one and let's just remember from first semester that the atomic number is the number of protons and if the atom is neutral then we know our protons are equal to our electrons. That's what a neutral atom is. There's no leftover charge. So if hydrogen has one proton then it has one electron and we'll assume it's neutral. So it's this one electron. That's what we want to focus on. Where in the atom is this one electron? And that's what the point of the video is. So I have drawn a hydrogen atom for you. And hydrogen has one energy level. We'll learn later on in this video how to figure out how many energy levels. We can also call this energy level a shell. So this is the first energy level. It's the closest to the nucleus. It's also called ground state. The first energy level, and only the first, is the exception. It can hold up to two electrons, meaning it can hold less than that, but no more than two. Every other energy level from there on out can hold up to eight. So if my hydrogen only has one electron, then let's go ahead and fill this in. Here's the one electron, okay? Uh, I'm going to use little dots to represent electrons. So for the sake of um, argument, we're going to put an electron either here, 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 here. We'll kind of see there's a little bit of a pattern that I use. So I'll put the first one up there. All right. Okay, let's take a look at another atom. How about carbon? Well, carbon has an atomic number of six on the periodic table. Again, we know that's the number of protons, and if carbon's neutral, those protons equal the electrons. And so we'll assume it's neutral, therefore six protons mean six electrons. Again, our focus are the electrons. How do we fill the electrons in an atom? So, like we learned last example, the first energy level, or energy shell, or just we can even call it a shell, can only hold up to two electrons. So, one, two top and bottom. Can it hold any more? No. Well, we said that there are six electrons. We just got rid of two of them, so there's four more left. The second energy level and all the energy levels from there on out can hold up to eight, no more than eight. It can hold less, but no more than eight. Again, we had six and we used up two, which means there are four electrons left. So let's fill those in. One, two, notice my pattern, three, Again, total of one, two, three, four, five, six. So again, first energy level holding two. The second energy can hold up to eight, but it's holding six. Okay, that's great. Let's look at another example. Sodium. Sodium has an atomic number of 11, so we know it has 11 protons and 11 electrons if it's neutral, and we'll assume it is. Sodium has one, two, three energy levels. Again, you'll learn about the energy levels in a second. So I have 11 protons. Remember the rule, the first energy level can only hold up to two. So there's one, two. The second one can hold up to eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so that makes 10, right? Eight and two makes 10. I have one more electron. These are my total electrons. So I need to use an extra energy level to get that to now 11 electrons. So if you count up all the black dots, a total of 11 electrons. Just a reminder, where are my valence electrons? Remember the outermost energy level is where I found my valence electrons and there's only one valence electron here on sodium. Okay, how about hydrogen valence electrons? One valence electron and hydrogen. That's why they're in the same column. How about carbon? Ooh, outermost energy level, one, two, three, four. That's why carbon is in column four on the periodic table. Just a refresher. Okay, 
So now that we've seen how these electrons are filling in, let's go back to some of our terminology and refresh our memory. An energy level, as we just saw, has a sublevel within it, and within the sublevel, there's an orbital. And again, I like to use this analogy, hopefully this is looking familiar, that an energy level represents the floors in a hotel. Uh, the sublevel is it represents um, rooms, and the orbitals represent the beds in the room. And remember, this is how we actually can find, or where we can find, electrons. So electrons are actually um, kind of like sleeping in the beds that are found in the room that are on the floor of a hotel. So kind of like, where can we find you? You are in a bed uh, that is found in a room in the hotel floor. So let's take this analogy just one step further and look at this. Okay. So this represents a piece of the pie, and if we think of an atom being a circle, and then I've just kind of cut out a piece of the circle, okay? Um, and if you notice here, I have energy level 1, n is equal to energy level, energy level 2, 3, and 4. 1 is the smallest ring, and so it's very, very, very small. There's not a lot of room. The only sublevel that there is in energy level 1 is sublevel S. In energy level 2, there is sublevel S and sublevel P. In energy level 3, there is sublevel S, P, and D. And in energy level 4, there is sublevel S, P, D, and F. So now you know the names of our sublevels. They're actually just letters. Okay? All right. Now, in sublevel S, there is only one orbital. Sublevel S, one orbital. Sublevel S, one orbital. Sublevel S, one orbital. In sublevel P, there are three orbitals. Wow, that's a lot. Three orbitals in P, three orbitals in P. In sublevel D, there's five orbitals. Five. And in sublevel F, which you notice doesn't happen often, there are seven orbitals. Now, to help remind you about this or help give you an analogy, here's the hotel that's back. You go to the first floor, which is our energy level, and you go to the room S, which is a sublevel, and you open that door, and there's one bed. Two electrons can fit in one orbital, one bed. Now I go on to the second floor, and the second floor is even bigger, and there's more room. So I have room S and room P. In room S, always is there's going to be one bed, so two electrons can fill in there. And in room P, there's always going to be three beds. So I've got two, four, six total electrons can fit in there. Okay, and then I go to the third floor. There's even more room on the third floor. There's room for room S, room P, and room D. Remember, room S always has one orbital. P always has three, and now we see D always has five. Look how many more electrons can fit in. Remember, each bed, or orbital, mm -hmm, can hold up to two electrons. Now let's look up here on the fourth level. I have S, P, D, and F. We said S holds one bed, P holds three, and D holds five, and now F holds seven. So two electrons can fit here, six, right? Two, four, six, eight, ten, and 14 electrons can be held in the F. And it keeps going on, but for our analogy right now, this is good enough, okay? All right. So, with that being said, there's actually a way you can arrange the periodic table, or the periodic table is already arranged, that can help you out with our sublevels. This is really good to sketch down. This section of the periodic table, the first two columns, are the S sublevels. The middle transitional metals happen to be the D, and the uh, elements to the right, which are mostly nonmetals, but some of the metals, are the P. We call these the S, D, P block. Down below, the anthonides, uh, actinides and lanthanides are the 